Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I wanted to continue with the teaching. Let's talk about, talk about Jesus, the gospel in the stars, this segment, the bridegroom comes out of his chamber. As I have previously said, this comes from Psalm 19, a Psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day into day utter speech, and night into night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. The bridegroom comes out of his chamber. In weddings today, the bride is the center of attention and all eyes are on the bride, waiting for the bride to walk down the aisle and all the events center around the bride till the bride throws the, the wedding bouquet and the, the young ladies try to try to get that bouquet. The bride, but in the old weddings, the bridegroom was the center of attention, not the bride. And the bridegroom would come out of his chamber and call for the bride to come out of her closet. Then he would lead the bride all around with the wedding party following them. Then they would eat and drink for several days before the wedding feast would be ended. You may recall that Jesus performed his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, where he turned the water into wine. How interesting that Jesus began his miraculous ministry in service to the bridegroom. The ten virgins were waiting for the voice of the bridegroom in Matthew 25. You recall? Five foolish, five wise. And they heard the voice of the bridegroom. The bridegroom comes. The bridegroom comes. And they, some of them didn't have oil in their lamps. When Jacob married Rachel, during the course of the wedding party, somehow or another, he wound up with Leah, her sister, and was married to her instead of Rachel because of the party that was held. So that brings us back to the psalm. And it says... In them has he, God, set a tabernacle for the sun. In the heavens, the heavens form a tabernacle for the sun, who is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. He's ready. This bridegroom, he's been waiting a long time for his bride, and he's coming out. We're talking about the sun here. You know how the sun, it go, the, the moon goes around the, the earth, and the earth goes around the sun, and the sun is making this circuit. That's what he says. And his circuit unto the ends of the heaven. So he's coming out of his chamber and he's going to make this trip all the way around the galaxy. And it's like this, uh, this train that follows the bride and the bridegroom. Just follows them around, all around, all around. And this, the heavens 
show us what this bridegroom sees or what you can see while you're in the feast of the bridegroom making his circuit around the galaxy. And, and as, as he goes, he sees all of these things in the circuit. It's just a wonderful thing that we have the gospel in the stars. But we also have the gospel in the Bible. And I'd like to share with you this book, The Everlasting Gospel of Jesus. It's, it's a wonderful book. Jesus told me at Burlington, he said, I want you to tell my story. He said, a lot of people have written about me. Some of them knew me. Some of them didn't. But I should be able to tell my story. And in this book, you can see on the cover of the book, What's happening here is this woman is pouring out ointment out of this alabaster box onto Jesus' head. It's been poured out on him. And all of these men are around there. They're looking at her and they're angry because why is she wasting this expensive ointment that could have been used over a period of time and she's pouring it all out on Jesus' head? And then over the top of her is this gospel angel to proclaim the gospel. Now what Jesus said was this woman what she has done, anywhere the gospel is preached, anywhere in the world, what this woman did is going to be told for a testimony of her. Now, why, is that, why was that so important? It was more important. There, there was Peter, James, and John. They're going to talk about them when the gospel... No, they're going to talk about this woman and what she did. See, nobody, it's not, they don't tell us who she was, where she came from, anything about her. She just came in and she did her work and she left. She came in, she had work to do and she did it. Jesus said she's done a good work. It was the best that she could have done. She did her best. While these men, all they wanted to do was murmur and criticize about what she was doing. See, that's the gospel. That was Jesus. Jesus came. Nobody knew who he was, where he came from, where he was going, and he came and he did his work, and then he left. And all the people around were murmuring and complaining about him. Whenever you bring up the gospel today, people will start murmuring and complaining about Jesus. They complain about Jesus, and he did a good work. He did the best that he could do. Whenever you bring the gospel, people will start murmuring and complaining about you. They don't know who you are. They don't know where you come from. All they know is they don't like it. They get mad and ugly and upset. And sometimes they just want to kick people around. That's the gospel. That's the truth. So you should pick up a copy of this. You can read it in English or in Spanish. You can read it in Spanish online for free if you got a 
Kindle Unlimited, or they're both on sale in digital uh, for eBooks for four ninety nine each in English or in Spanish. So it's not a lot of money, and it's his story. Don't you want to read his story? A lot of people have written books. Some of them knew him. Some of them didn't. But this is his story. He asked me. He asked me to write it, and I did. So pick up a copy. Thank you.